Now, this chart here is looking at the net unrealized profit and loss, commonly known as Nupal. This is one of our most popular metrics. And we've got three different variants shown here up in the top. We've got our short-term holders in red. We've got the aggregate market in yellow or, or this kind of uh, darker yellow color. And then we have in blue, the long-term holders. Now, just to refer back, this is a derivative of the MVRV ratio, which is one of the most popular and well-known metrics in on-chain analysis. It is essentially showing us how much unrealized profit or loss are these different cohorts currently holding. Now, down the bottom, you'll see that the price chart has been colored. Now, what we're doing here is when all three, let's just start from the bottom, when all three cohorts are underwater, meaning that the price is trading below their average cost basis, this will flag blue. It's essentially looking for periods of capitulation when pretty much everybody who is even remotely speculative or thinking about selling, if we think about this from an investor psychology standpoint, these levels of unrealized loss, the red in people's portfolio, is usually enough to shake out all but the strongest of hands. And typically that is approaching a point of seller exhaustion, which we highlight here in blue. Now on the flip side, in an uptrend, we can see that we have this orange color and then a red. And the orange color is really highlighting when at least one of these Nupal variants is above plus one standard deviation from its long-term mean. In other words, the amount of unrealized profit held by any one of those cohorts, short-term holders, the aggregate market, and long-term holders, if any one of those is plus one standard deviation above their long-term mean, that is typically where we start to see the sell side pressure start to kick in because people have got enough green in their portfolio that they're feeling like taking some off the table. Now, what I also want to just highlight, again, let's use 2017 as our analog. We have typically seen this as we break the previous cycle all-time high, about 1,400 back here in 20, uh, I think it was the border of 26, no, it was in 2017, where we broke through and we get more than two of those cohorts is in the red getting into the very, very peak of the market. If we look back here in 2021, much the same. As we break the previous all-time high, the unrealized profit of at least one cohort goes above one SD. And when we get into the cycle peak, at least two of those, sometimes all three, are in an, well, a statistically meaningful degree of profit. Now, just to zoom in here, you can actually see that we have tagged at least one of those cohorts has moved into a statistically meaningful degree of profit. We haven't yet hit all like two or three of those cohorts, but certainly we've hit one of them. So it's telling us as we break the previous all-time high, the amount of unrealized profit is getting to the point where we can start paying attention. And I will just frame this up. If you've watched these videos for a while, you know that I described everything up until the all-time high, but above the true market mean price, which we'll touch on shortly, everything in there I classify as the enthusiastic bull. People believe the market is now no longer in a bear. They believe that, hey, we actually might get to all-time highs again. Sentiment picks up, profit comes back into the system, demand starts to pick up. All of these things are very typical of a Bitcoin market cycle. And as we break through the all-time high, we typically transition from an enthusiastic bull, which is a you know almost a bit of a breaking of the disbelief phase to what I call the euphoric bull. And this, as you can see, can go on for a year or at the very least several months where things can really get quite crazy if we look at things from previous cycles. Um, and this is really what we're trying to frame up here with this data.